In this video, I'm going over our lesson um, regarding sampling distributions, our sampling method. Um, but before we get to that, we need to make sure that when we're drawing a sample for our survey, um, that the sampling method is um, not biased. So if the sampling is biased, then it's not gonna accurately reflect the population. But basically, if a group of the population or part of the population is being over or underrepresented, then the survey is going to be biased or the sampling method. So like looking at example 1A and B, a survey of students at a school is conducted by contacting every 10th student from the complete roster and asking whether he or she plans to go to college. So notice how what we're doing is, is to collect or get a survey. You're contacting, yes, every 10th student, but where are we drawing every 10th student from? complete roster. So we are actually using the source of the complete roster, which means every student has that equal chance. So that's why this situation or this sampling is not biased. Then here, a survey of a city's residents is conducted by asking 20 randomly selected people at a grocery store whether the city should impose a beverage tax. Now, I'm sure you wanna look at this and go, well, 20 randomly selected people. Well, does that mean that this is not biased? Well, no, because where are these people selected? At the grocery store. And what is the question about? A beverage tax. So if I'm a person already at the grocery store having to buy beverages, then what is going to be my response? More than likely, I'm going to wanna to be against this beverage tax. So even though it's 20 randomly selected, we are gonna be overrepresenting the population of people who do not wanna impose the beverage tax because we're asking these people when they're at the grocery store going to buy beverages. So that's why this is biased. So we're gonna overrepresent. So make sure to look past if it's every 10th or 20 randomly look to see if you're over or under representing a group. So go ahead and pause the video and try the two U tries here on your own and identifying if the sampling method is biased or not biased. And here we go. So the first one you should have noticed, yes, that he is um, asking or yes, he's asking the first 25 adults he sees. However, he is a health club um, owner wants to know about people who exercise at least 20 minutes three times per week and who or where does he pull these adults from the mall on a weekday at 10 o'clock now usually who is going to be at the mall on a weekday at 10 o'clock older people nobody in school nobody with a job so really you're pulling 25 adults but are, who are gonna be coming from that same group or that same population. So that's why you should have said that the sampling method is biased. Then B, a car dealer wants to know what percentage of the population is areas planning to buy a car in the next year. The dealer surveys the next 15 people who come to the car lot. So yeah, he's gonna go ahead and just survey the next 15 people, but if they're going to the lot, they are technically going to buy a car. So is this biased or not biased asking these people at the car lot if they plan on buying a car? Well, absolutely this is biased because these people are there to buy a car. So more than likely, they're going to say yes to this survey. So that's why this is also biased. So now getting into, again, keeping in mind, right, that we want to make sure that the sampling method is not biased, we're now going to talk about there are six different types of sampling methods. So here we have the simple random sample. So for you guys to also make sense of this, um, just to kind of, if you want to add in, let's just say we're going to conduct a survey at Archer, so at AHS, right, for students. So the first type is the simple random sample. So the simple random sample is where members are chosen but gives everyone an equal likely chance of being chosen, everyone. So this would be like all students' names, so all students, all AHS students' names are written down and you draw 
100 names. So notice how all names are written down on a, um, on a sheet of paper, and then you draw 100 out of all of the um, students' names. So that's why this would be a simple random, because you're drawing from all of the students. Now, systematic. So systematic is um, here, if you think about it, there's a system to it. There is a pattern. So this would be a every tenth student is asked to complete the survey. So every 10th, every third, every fifth, that's gonna be your pattern. Now, stratified. So stratified and cluster are kind of um, the same, but um, I'll show you um, to clarify the difference. So stratified and cluster, you're dividing into groups, the population. So the first thing I think of is if we're talking about a survey at Archer, I could think of grade levels. So here's the difference. In stratified, you're randomly choosing numbers from each group. So there is randomly choosing the members. So like for example here, we are choosing, let's say 100 from each grade level. So not everybody is being chosen, but we're choosing 100 from each grade level. So we're choosing 100 from the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Now the cluster is we have the division of the group. So here again, we are dividing amongst the grade level, but then all members are chosen to survey. So this would be like all 11th graders. That would be your cluster. So you have the grade levels grouped, but then you just select and go with all 11th graders. Now, the convenience example. So convenience, literally think about it. This is out of my convenience. This is easily accessible to me. So if I'm the person, let's say, who is running the survey at Archer, then what's gonna be convenient or easily accessible for me is, is I'm going to only survey my own classes. So I'm gonna survey my students. That would, would, would be out of convenience or easily accessible. Then self-selected. So notice again how what it means is you are selecting yourself. You are volunteering. So literally, this is just asking for volunteers to complete the survey. So notice how it starts off accurate and then it gets like least accurate. Because if you think about it, if I were to do a survey that would should represent Archer High School, but I'm only surveying my students, Am I truly doing a representation of the Archer population? No. Same thing too with volunteers. So keep in mind, we started off um, pretty with like the most accurate here, the simple random, then getting to the least accurate. And we'll talk about that later. So like in the example, we're going to identify here so we're talking about the NFL and how players feel, and they decide that they're gonna sample 100 players. Well, the officials choose the first 100 players who volunteer. So if they are volunteering, then what method is that? The self-select. So then the next, the officials randomly choose three players from each of the 32 teams. So notice how that's our groups, right? 32 teams, they've been grouped together. And we're only randomly choosing though three players from each of the 32 teams. So that's why this would be the stratified because the grade levels is like the teams, but we're only choosing a few from each team. So this is stratified. Now, if this was the cluster, which is the other division into the groups, you would just say, you're choosing the Atlanta Falcons players. That's it. So that would be your cluster. So notice the difference between those two. So now in C, the officials have a computer generate a list of 100 players that includes all of the players. So you are choosing, choosing a random 100 from all of the players. So that would be your simple random example. So go and try, pause the video and try the U try. And if you need to, of course, go back to your notes, right? Go back to the um, chart here to see um, what you think the answers are in the U try.
and here we go. So here they are um, talking about a campaign. So a campaign staff for a state politician wants to know how voters in the state feel about um, issues. So here they call every 50th person out of the entire list. That is a pattern. So that would be your, um, <clears throat> sorry, that would be your systematic because that is your pattern, your system. You randomly select 100 voters, but from each county. So the county represent your groups. You're not selecting all voters from Gwinnett County, right? You're only selecting 100 voters from each county. So this would be stratified. Then they ask every person who comes to the next campaign rally. So really that is just what is easiest access to the per, to the people because they're coming to the next campaign rally. So that's why this is convenient because they're only serving people who are actually going and um, they'll have easy access to at the next campaign rally. So now again, talking about not just the methods, but now going back to accuracy, right? Because we talked about biased and unbiased. So now thinking about the accuracy. Now, no matter what, the most accurate is going to be your census because the census, every single person in the population is surveyed. However, think about money and think about time, right? If you want to do a survey, but for let's say all Gwinnett, Gwinnett County high school students, well guys, there are more than 15 high schools in Gwinnett County. And think about it, you have about 3,000, 2,000 to 3,000 students at all of these high schools. So is it going to, to be a budget and timely to do a census? No. So that's why in most cases it is best to do a survey where you're or using a sampling method um, to do your survey. So not necessarily a census. So that's why here that's where those sampling methods come in. Now keep in mind this is basically um, your most accurate and that's what we talked about earlier how the convenience and self-selected. These are the people who are easily accessible and these are the people who volunteer. These are the least accurate. Now, also think about it like this with the um, methods here. Top to bottom, also, this is your most and this is your least. So the overall least accurate sampling method is the self-select because these are people who volunteer. They're interested in the topic. Then the most overall accurate sampling method is the simple random. Now, I just realized that we need to add to the bottom of this. What's missing is systematic. So again, most to least. The most accurate is the simple random. Always least accurate is the volunteering, the self-select. So let's say, for example, here, we're talking about a high school with all of these students enrolled and the student newspaper wants to take a survey of the school. So let's identify what's going to be the most and least accurate after identifying the sampling method. So here you're randomly selecting 50 freshmen. So it looks like we're selecting 50 from each grade level. So remember when you're selecting a few from each group, that is your stratified. Then here you're, so you're randomly selecting 200 students, but from the complete roster. So this is your simple random. Because all students have easily, um, all students, um, have the opportunity to be chosen um, for the 200. Then choosing every 10th student who enters the cafeteria at lunchtime. So every 10th student, this is your systematic. So out of these, which is the most accurate? Your simple random. And think about it. All 200 students have, it, or all students from the complete roster, all of our students here, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors, have an equal opportunity of being chosen to represent for the 200. Then here, the systematic, this is the least. So not only is this the least, but then also think about it like this. Do all students enter the cafeteria and go to lunch? No. So that's also something to think about too here um, as to why this is also the least accurate. But again, keep, a, keep in mind that most to least, that top to bottom. 
So go ahead and try the um, you try on your own. And here we go. So here, a small town newspaper wants to report on public opinion about the new city hall building. So we're gonna classify each sampling method. So asking readers to write in and give their opinion. Well, here, this is, if you think about it, and you should have noticed, that this is asking, um, asking readers. So the only people who have to do this are the people who volunteer and choose to do this. So this is self-selected. Then here, the survey, survey the people who come to the next council meeting. Again, easily accessible, so this is convenient. So between these two, which is the least accurate? The self-selected. So again, remember, anytime it's volunteer-based, this is going to give you the least accurate representation of the population. Even though they're both not accurate, the self-selected is the least accurate. And this is going to give you more accurate data than the self-selected. So now also go ahead and read through this and try this you try on your own. And here we go. An environmental educational club has 318 members. We're gonna go through these methods, but which of the methods would select a sample of 20 members at random, but from the entire club? So keep in mind, we're trying to figure out how we're representing the entire club. So ask for 20 members to volunteer. Well, here's that self-select again, right? Which is the least accurate. So we're gonna go ahead and cross out number one. So I can cross out A and C, because remember, volunteering self-select is the least accurate. That's not gonna represent 318 members. Now, number two, place the numbers of all, names of all 318 members on slips of paper. Then mix up and select 20 of them. Now, two is a representation because, yes, you're only selecting 20 of them, but where are these 20 coming from? 318 members. Then number the members from one to 18. Then you're going to use a random number generator to list 20 random integers out of the one to 318. So again, all of the 318 members are being included and you're pulling 20 randomly. Then number four, select 10 of the younger and 10 of the older. Well, but what about the people in between? So here, that means if you're only grouping them by the younger and by the older, is this a representation of the 20 members? No. So that's why when you're talking about the entire educational club, it is only two and three. Also, just to show you, you're sending a survey to the 318 members and you're recording the first 20 responses, which again, is very volunteer based. 